Can you make a line array speaker for multiple bookshelf speakers? Kind of a do-it-yourself project? Philip in Los Angeles asks that very question and wants to, to know if it's a crazy idea to make a sort of a line array speaker using those multiple bookshelves. Well, I, I'm going to, I'll give you my best shot at it. Um, it it's, I'll show you why it is kind of a crazy idea, but I, I don't want to diss anybody's ideas because from crazy ideas of which I've had more than my fair share come great ideas. Let's, let's talk first about just what is a line source. If you remember my Infinity IRS 5s, they go from basically floor to ceiling with drivers. And you have a row of tweeters, and you have a row of mid-ranges, and a row of woofers. So a line array is literally a line of speakers from floor to ceiling or as tall as you want to get. You might, maybe you'll have a six foot array or a four foot array. It, 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 it does matter, but it, for sake of discussion, it, it doesn't matter, okay? A line array is simply a line of speakers. So here's, here's the, 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 the deal. I, I've managed to scrounge a couple of speakers. Now, this is an ELAC, so we're looking at a two-way loudspeaker. Standard configuration, the bottom is the, the woofer, the top is the tweeter. And over here, I've got the same sort of thing. This, this happens to be a Wharfdale, but it's the same sort of thing, right? You've got a tweeter on top, it's a two-way. Tweeter on top, woofer on the bottom. Now, the problem is, if we stack these guys, one on top of the other, the tweeters are kind of far apart. See that? They don't make a line. That's not a line of tweeters, and it's not a line of woofers, even though we have a line of drivers. So this, this is not a good way to do it, and does not a line source make. Now, if I take the top speaker and I flip it uh, upside down, now the tweeters are together, and they sort of form a line, but now my woofers are apart. This, by the way, and for those Ohm's Law uh, listeners, what I've done is I, I've, I've got one speaker turned upside down sitting on top of the other. And so what you have is the two, the two tweeters are together and the two woofers are far apart. This is called a Diapolito configuration where the, the, the two highest frequency drivers are kind of in the middle and they fan out. Now, if I had mid-ranges and they would go like that, so that the, the woofers, you'd have a woofer on top and on the bottom. But that's about as far as it goes. That's called a D, from Joseph Diapolito. Uh, and you see this in, in Duntex, I think Focals. Do they do that? No, I don't think Focals do. But anyway, um, I don't remember. So, yeah, this makes an interesting combination. And you can make a Diapolito speaker, do-it-yourself project with two bookshelves. That, that's kind of cool. Um, but if you want to make a line source, here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to turn it on its side. Okay? Now, if we uh, make these speaker boxes are heavy. Okay, now, if you can imagine, so what I've done is I've got the two speakers on their sides. Now the woofers are lined up in a row. The tweeters are lined up in a row, and if I were to stack 10 of these boxes tall and hook them all together, you'd have a line source. You'd have a line of tweeters, and you'd have a line of woofers. May not be the, you know, the, the optimum placing, because you do want tweeters fairly close together. Uh, woofers don't care so much, but tweeters you probably do. But it would make a line source. It would make a great do-it-yourself uh, project, and if you could find 10 pair, 20 pair of bookshelf loudspeakers cheap enough, you could stack those suckers up and make a line source doing it this way as opposed to the other way that I showed. How would you connect them in back? That's the last part I'll cover. In the back we have your, your red and your black, okay? So what you'd want to do, because you, remember these, these particular ones are 4 ohm loudspeakers. If you put red to red and black to black, you're going to have two ohms because parallel impedances combine into half as much. 
So four ohms plus four ohms is actually two ohms. Okay, so when you put things in parallel, they, they, they get smaller, if that's an easy way to think about it, right? And in the opposite happens when we put them in series. If we, if we go red and then black ties to red of the second speaker, and then, um, and then the black, now they're in series. So red here, and then the black of this goes to the red of the second speaker, and the black here goes to your amplifier. So these two go to your amp. Um, that's called in series, and there it doubles. So a four ohm speaker becomes eight ohms. So what you do is you, you come up with something called series paralleling. So you would take, oh, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm not good with math, but you, you, you can figure it out, it's pretty easy. You take, say, say, five of them and you put them in series, right? And so now you have 40 ohms. And then you take, um, is that right? Well, don't, don't get me, no, because they're four ohms, it'd be 20 ohms. Uh, anyway, so, and then, then the next stack, you take that whole series and you series the next stack, and then you put stack A and stack B in parallel, and now you're back down to 10 ohms. Or, and if you add it up right, you can figure it out. You series some and, and series others, you put them in groups of series, and then you take those series to groups and you parallel them to get the impedance that you want. And that is how you can make a line source with bookshelf speakers. Have fun. And if you do it, send me a picture. Paul at psaudio.com. Thanks. Bye.